do that as part of the elevations. It'll make more sense over there. Okay, let me switch over to elevations instead. Okay, go back to the plan, take a look out there. Let's see where our elevations are. Okay, the elevations, they've been hanging around out here, the default elevations, north, east, west, and south. Okay, and some people sort of wonder where they come from. How are they defined? And let's take a look at that. Every elevation is actually defined by a little marker, a marker which sort of shows where the elevation is, and then there's a cut line associated with that elevation. So if I go back to the floor plan view, and I go out and look for the markers, you'll actually see them. There's the elevation marker, which is sort of for the eastern elevation, and if I click on that, you'll actually get the cut line. Let me zoom on out so you can see it. That's the cut line right there. So if that is my cut line, let's go ahead and start playing around with what that actually does. This is going to be very much like doing the cut plane. Wherever I drag that line is where the view is going to be cut. So let me even, let me close everything that's hidden, and then I'll like uh, tile these so you can sort of see them together. Okay, let me get the east elevation. And now we'll do a little tiling so that you can actually see things. Okay, I got my floor plan, I got my elevation. Let me zoom up on each. So you get a sense of what's up. There's the elevation. Here's the floor plan. There's the marker. So I go moving it in. Everything's fine. I move it in. Everything's kind of groovy. I move it on in. Everything's still looking outside the building. I push it into the building. And all of a sudden now, actually we're sort of above the balcony right now, so you can't hardly see what the difference is. Okay, there we go. All we've cut through the building. Let me even add shadows to that so you can sort of see that a little bit better. I'm going to shade it. How about that? Okay. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. That was off again. Okay. So if I go through and I adjust the cut line, okay, we're outside the building. I adjust the cut line. We're inside the building. Okay, so that's what the cut line does. It's really, and you'll figure out pretty quickly, there's very little difference between a section and an elevation. It's really kind of the same concept. It's just the camera that cuts vertically as opposed to cutting horizontally. Okay, so good with that? Okay, next up, let's show you some variations on this cut line. One is the whole idea of cropping these views, and let's show you how that works. I'm in my elevation. I'll turn on the crop and turn on the crop region. Let me zoom out so you can see what I just did. There's the crop region. Let me pull that crop in close. A lot of us did this on assignment one, just to be able to get the views on the sheets. Okay, so we're cropped in a lot tighter. Actually, even so you know, you can crop vertically too, and that's often a very good thing to do. If you don't really need to see so far down into the ground, you can bring that up. I can sort of bring that down too. Okay, so I can get in much tighter. When I do those things, and I come back over here, Notice that the crop line, or the cut line's actually gotten a little bit smaller and has these little blue dots on the ends. Okay, those little blue dots indicate the edge of the, of the crop boundary. So if you go through and drag those dots, okay, you're changing the crop. Or if you change the crop over here, I think I just changed an object there. Okay, it'll change the length of those blue lines, or the blue dots. Okay, so those things are completely interlinked. You can adjust your crop either in the plan view or in the elevation view, whatever you want. Okay, so far so good? Okay, and let's give you the final variation on this funny line and what it does. And that's the whole notion of how far away you're looking at the building. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I got a region, it's cropped. Let's come over here and take a look. We'll zoom over here. Take a look at the building. Now, the building over here is actually showing us quite a bit of depth right now. You'll see that we're seeing what I think of as the face of the building. That's right in here. That's kind of the eastern face. But as we keep on looking back, we can see the stairway. We can see this little kind of covered entry sort of feature. We can see this sort of bump out on the second floor, which is actually really back over here. It's quite a bit in the distance there. And as you look at this elevation view, you could decide that's a little bit confusing. I'm looking too far into the background. If I really just want to focus on what's happening at the front face of the building, I don't want to see that far into the background. We'd be nice to be able to control that. Okay. So let's show you how you do that. 
here we are, we got our elevation, that's the, where the cut is, that's the cropping. This whole notion of how deep you look into the building sounds an awful lot like, well, it's kind of like that whole view depth thing, that whole cut range view depth thing, and it actually is. In these views, it's called the clipping, the far clip, but it's really the same concept. And if we would like to adjust that, what we do is we choose the view, we say that we want to turn on the clipping, it's a view property, and I can say turn it on, far clipping, right now it's not. Let me go ahead and clip it. Okay, let's show you what the difference is. Okay, now it not only sort of shows us the boundaries of the crop, but it also has this depth pull. And as we pull back, we can go from just the face. If I pull back a little further, I can get the uh, stairway in there. If I pull back a little further, I can start to see the carport or the little uh, covered entry right there. And if I pull back further, I'm going to get that sort of bump out over the second floor. So you can control how deep you want to look into the building, and especially on a very large project, you know, cropping and setting the right depth is really you know, critical to make sure you're really looking at the building you want, or the part of the building you want to look at. You don't necessarily want to see the full depth because some feature of a wing that's very far in the distance could actually confuse the issue very much. Okay, so it'd be nice to be able to go ahead and turn those on and off. Okay. So each of these different elevations, the north elevation, the south elevation, these all have this notion of uh, where the cut line is. Is it cropped and is it clipped at the backside? And for any of those views, you can open the elevation. Okay, turn on the cropping. Let me look at the view properties and I'll turn on the clipping. Right now, it's sort of clipped itself right out of, uh, you don't even see it anymore. But let me go through here, and I'll pull that back so you can actually see the front of the building again. Okay, If I want to crop that, let me zoom out over here. I can pull that in over here. So really, feel free to use whatever view makes the most sense to you in terms of doing that. Once you're here and you've got it cropped and clipped and everything looking the way you want it, okay, all the other principles still apply. So if you want to, for example, in this elevation view, if you don't want to see these plantings, you think the plantings are sort of confusing the view, that's a visibility graphics. You can turn those off. I'll open visibility graphics and turn off the plantings. Okay, now they're not there. I can shade it if I want to. I can adjust the scale if I want to. I can turn on the shadows if I want to. Just whatever you think is going to sort of portray that in the most effective way to your clients as you're trying to sell them your design. Okay. So two more notions about elevations before we take our break. And let me show you kind of just the whole notion of how you create a new elevation. and uh, what these little markers mean. Okay, here's what I want to show you. Okay, the idea is there's the existing elevations that have already been set up. That part's good to get going, but if you want to go through and create a new elevation, here's how you got to do it. It's one of the tools that's under the View tab, and it's right here. It's called Elevations. I can just choose the main elevation type. And if I go hovering around the outside of the building, notice that the little marker for the elevation It'll kind of hug up to the building. As you hover near it, it'll try and find a wall and try to draw the elevation parallel to that wall. Okay, so that's pretty good. In general, that's what you want it to do. You'd like to have elevations to be parallel to your walls. That way, they're the most accurate. So again, just grab the little elevation tool. And when you bring it on down, you'll sort of be able to get to the inside of the wall or the outside of the wall, wherever you place it. Okay, now. When you place a new elevation, it'll try to sort of crop things to be about right for the wall that you're up near. So if you place it on the outside, okay, we have some new elevation. It's showing up out here. Okay. If I place another elevation, though, on the inside, I'm going to go ahead and put it inside the kitchen here so we can sort of see what's going on in the kitchen. Okay, I can put it in there instead. Let's go ahead and take a look at that elevation. 
This is an example of an interior elevation. And we often put elevations on the exterior of the building, but when we have rooms that have cabinetry and fixtures and things like that, in the same way I often put detailed plans, I often put elevations there to help explain what's going on with the cabinetry and the architectural detailing. Now these type of views I typically bring up to a different scale, like half scale, bring it much bigger. I can crop that, again I can shade it, I can do whatever I want to. I can uh, visibility graphics to sort of highlight or de-emphasize different things that I want to do. Okay. Now, the reason I sort of start messing around with it and showing you about those different settings is it starts to bring up this point about, well, if I'm going to go ahead and have a bunch of different views and I'm going to go through and shade and set the level of detail and set the scale and set the visibility of graphics, it sure would be nice if I had some way to sort of grab the settings from one view and apply it to another view and apply it to another view so I don't have to keep on setting that time and time again. Okay. And there is something like that. It's called a view template. And that's sort of an incredibly powerful thing to work with. Let me go on back there. There it is, saving and review, uh, reusing the view settings. What we want to do is, if you find yourself creating different types of views again and again, and you want some consistency between them, which you usually do, okay, view templates will really help you. So how that works is as follows. I, for example, have set up some settings here, this half scale shaded view for my uh, interior rendering, or my interior elevation. If I would like that to be a template, I can say view templates and create a template from the current view. By doing that, what it's going to do is I'll give it a name, I'll call this my interior elevations. Okay. I can go through and choose all the different features here. It's going to copy the features from the existing view, like half scale. I didn't actually set it up to find, but let me let that be part of my definition. I can go ahead and just turn on or turn off any overrides if I'd like to sort of set those. I have the model style, I have what discipline, all these different things that are associated with the view I can capture. Say okay, and then they're locked away under that name. Now where that gets to be useful is, let me come back over here, if it turns out I actually want to get some elevations of the other walls of the kitchen, I can just click on the other sides of the marker. I'll get some more elevation views. Okay, this is the other side of the kitchen. Here's another side of the kitchen. There's another side of the kitchen. Now these don't have the style yet. They're sort of all just kind of the plain white hidden line style. If I would like to quickly have them ha adopt the same settings, I could say apply a new template to the view, grab interior elevations, and as soon as I say okay, I will just apply that setting to that other view. So view settings is just kind of a quickie way of uh, getting some consistency across your documents. So apply the new template, I'll go for interior elevations and apply it to this view. Okay, and now all my different views, when I line them up on the sheet, will have the same color, the same scale, the same shading, show the same sorts of objects. Okay, so you may not use view templates for this assignment right now, but Kind of keep them in the back of your mind, you know, because as soon as you go through and sort of set up something that you really like, you know, we tend to have view templates set up for things like architectural drawings versus structural drawings. We tend to have them for exterior elevations, and you have sort of set styles. And the nice thing is, if you're working with several other people, you know, that style can have all your decisions encoded, and people don't have to kind of make those decisions independently, and you get inconsistent drawings. Okay. Last thing on elevations is as follows. Let's go back to the floor plan view. I'm just going to close all these up. You might look at this marker over here, this big old elevation marker, and this one that's kind of hanging around out there, and you know, decide that you, know, you, you don't really like the look of it, because it's kind of hanging around. It just sort of looks like a big old box with some triangles on it. You know, it, it may not be doing much for you right now. Okay, Let me explain what it does do for you and then you can decide whether or not you want to show it. Here's where it's useful. If I create a new sheet, and I'll put a sheet out here, and I start drawing some out, dragging some elevations to the sheet. Let me get that south elevation on a sheet too. Okay, let's go back in and take a look at those markers again. The markers have a little more information to them now. Okay, 
What the markers actually show us is where that elevation is located on which sheet it's located and also what the view number is on that sheet. So for example, here in the kitchen, I can tell that the east elevation's over there, but not the other elevations, and I would find it on sheet A102. If I come back over to the sheet again, and I place some more of the elevations in here, I already got that one up there, let me get this one. As I continue to place the different elevations, that marker will get filled in with more information. So I can tell that it's views two, four, and five on that sheet. Okay, now when you're working with a live 3D model, this is not so important because you can just actually click on the marker and real quickly get to that elevation view. In fact, this is probably the best part about the marker right here. If you don't sure where that view is, you can just double click on it and it'll take me right to that view. <laughs> Again, if you're not sure where it is, just double click and you'll go right to that view. Okay, so. Again, our projects have been pretty simple so far, but if you can start imagining of something that has 100 different views in it, the ability to find the marker and double click and get right to the view is very kind of convenient. Okay, but especially this is necessary when you print these things out, because for someone looking at it on paper, they need that marker so they can sort of see, oh, if I want to see this wall of the kitchen, where am I going to find it? I'm going to find it as whatever the view is on that other sheet. And it's actually completely dynamic. I can rename that. I can say, oh no, that's sheet A501. Two. Say this is going to be my interior elevations. Okay, and as soon as I rename that sheet, you'll see that actually the marker is updating too. So completely dynamically linked, which is very, very handy because you don't have to worry about maintaining all those different things. Okay, so that's what the markers are good for, especially when you print and you want the markers. As you're designing and just sort of sharing with your clients though, if you don't want to see that big old marker sitting around right in the middle of the kitchen, what do you need to do? Okay, it's a type of object, it's an annotation, and you want to filter it out of the view. Okay, which should tell you that, okay, visibility graphics, let's go to the annotations, and we can actually turn off the elevation markers right there. Okay, they're still there, they still exist. We can bring them back in another view, in fact, this is a case where, and a good example of, you may want to have one view which has all that stuff turned on so that you can real quickly navigate around and get to what you need to, but then have all that stuff hidden that you're going to present to the client. Okay, and just keep two duplicate views so you don't have to keep on, you know, if you find yourself going back to visibility graphics more than two or three times in a view, okay, it's a good sign that you probably want to duplicate the view and have two views, each of which have different settings to them too bad in terms of what's going on. And as we create elevations, sections are really just the closest cousin of elevations. They just sort of look a little bit different in terms of how their markers appear, but they really have almost equivalent functionality. So let's just kind of show you how to do a section real quick. Sections, we grab the section tool as opposed to the elevation tool. We can again set a scale to it, or I'll make it a quarter scale section. And I can just draw a line through the building. That's actually placing the cut plane. So the marker, for sections and the cut planes and the markers are really the same thing. They're all together. But when I place the section, notice the section actually has the far clip plane and the cropping already defined. Inherently, sections are cropped and far clipped. So you can go ahead and adjust the far clip by pulling that in, or adjust the cropping by pulling these guys into the sides. Or even just rotate the view by flipping the section over so it looks the other way. So just a couple comments on sections. Sometimes we draw sections that look like this that show a lot of the distance. Okay, so we can go ahead and do that. Let me turn up the finer level of detail. Okay, and we can sort of really take a look at the section. Sometimes you like sections that show the distance and show the furniture and things like that. If I was going to go ahead and just draw a structural section, I might want to not show so much distance. I might also want to turn off the furniture and the uh, cabinetry and things like that. So what can we do to make that happen? I'll go back over to level one and grab the section. So decide whether you like your sections to show depth or sometimes you have these little wafer thin sections and those are enough to just sort of show the detail of how the building's connected. So now you can sort of see pretty clearly 
this, uh, you know, here's the structural system and how it's going to sort of fit together. We can go through and visibility graphics to turn off. Uh, oops, I'm going to turn that up. Let's pop that up for a second. There we go. Close that up. We will visibility graphics so that we can turn off that furniture and also turn off the casework. And now if we go zooming on in here, you might imagine this is actually very close to what the actual construction like uh, section is going to look like, the building section is going to look like. And in a later section, we're actually going to show you how to add the sill plate, oh, the header for the window, the floor joists, and things like that. So you can actually, sh you know, actually make this into the actual construction documents. Okay. So you just got to decide what sort of section you want, whether it's more for effect or whether you want it to actually be this thin slice, which is going to show just the construction like layout. Okay, so section's pretty straightforward, but again, cut the view, get the clipping, get the cropping, filter it, and then just decide really what it is you want to have happen as far as the shading and the graphics and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, when you place the elevation and section views, this is what we showed you last time. The same thing actually happens with the section mark. If I come back over to the sheet view and I place a section, oops, that section down there, I'm sorry, looking at the wrong thing. I place that section on the view. Okay, now when I go back over to level one, you'll see that the section marker is also updated with a reference. Now, this whole idea with the section markers and the elevation markers, again, this is a good case of where often I'll have one view that has all the section markers and the elevation markers shown just so I can navigate around, and then I'll have other views that has all that stuff hidden because the clients don't necessarily want to see all that stuff. Okay, so I can again, visibility graphics, go to the annotations, and in the same way I can turn off the elevation markers, I can turn off those section markers. Okay, and then it'll still show up in the other views, okay, but it just won't show up in that one view there. Okay, following closely on the heels of all these elevations and sections is the whole notion of 3D models. And the 3D views are actually very, very powerful for showing what's going on. The 3D views, there's really two big categories. You have to worry about these bird's eye views, which are sort of like being on the outside of a globe that you're rotating around. And then camera views, which are really like taking a camera and positioning yourself in the model and looking from within the model to sort of see what you're looking at. Let's take a look at both of those. There is by default a default 3D view. And if I click on the little house guy up in the top of the title bar, you'll sort of get to the default 3D view. It also shows up down here in the project browser. There's 3D view, it takes us to the same thing. This view kind of looks pretty good for what we want. You see me navigating around in here all the time in different methods. Um, let me go ahead and use the view cube. The view cube is kind of a fun one to use. You can just kind of click on a corner and it'll reorient the model. Sometimes you get underneath your model, which was a little bit, little bit confusing at first. Okay, but you can usually get back. If you ever get completely disoriented, click on the little home guy. The little home guy will always take you back up to the southeast corner and kind of look down on the model. So that's just kind of a quickie way to always get back if you're sort of inside out and can't figure out what you're looking at. Now one thing that's a little bit confusing about the 3D views is if I, for example, click on the top, this looks an awful lot like the roof plan, but it isn't. You can't do all the things that you do in a plan view in the 3D view, okay? So you can select things pretty well, but for example, we found out you can't really place doors in this view very well. Okay, so watch out for that. If you think you should be placing something and it's not allowing you to, look at whether you're actually looking at just the 3D view oriented to that perspective or whether you actually have the plan view turned on. Same way, if I flip to the front side, that looks an awful lot like the elevation. Okay, I can select things, I can move things around. There's a lot of things I can do, but there's a few things I can't do in that view. Okay. So let me go back to the home view. Another thing some people do with this cube is they drag it around to pivot or orbit the model. 
I never hardly do that. That's just not sort of the way I've learned to do it. What I tend to do is actually use the other tool that is useful for this, and that's called the steering wheel. And it's right here. If you click on it, it brings up this little uh, palette of tools. And the way the steering wheel works is if you hover the mouse over, or hover the cursor over one of these different regions in the steering wheel, you'll have that functionality when you press the mouse down. So for example, it's set to pan right now. If I push down on the mouse, I'll pan left to right, pan up or down on panning. Okay, Zooming will let me zoom in or zoom out. If I push up with a zoom, it'll zoom in. If I pull towards the bottom with a zoom, it'll zoom out. Okay, the one I'm always using is orbit. I'm always orbiting my model where I can shift it around and kind of get different orientations, kind of try to see what's going on. Now, the two don't have to be used exclusively. If you've orbited somewhere and you're lost, just hit the home cube or the home view or use the view cube, and you can real quickly snap back to whatever you want. Okay, now, these 3D views are really kind of cool, but we're going to show you two variations on what you need to do with them. One is the default 3D view is great, okay, but it's really easy to change things in. So if you want to save a view, it's not the best one to save your settings on. Because what happens is if you go ahead and save, or if you set up a 3D view using the default 3D view and you put it on your sheets, everything looks good until someone shifts the default 3D view around, then all of a sudden the view that was on your sheets no longer has the orientation you want it to. Okay, so how do you combat that? What you do is you get the 3D view looking sort of the way you like it. I'll be over here. And then, as opposed to using that view on my sheets, I'll duplicate the view. Okay, and oh, okay, instead of being the default 3D view, I'll rename that. This is going to be my Southwest Aerial. Okay, the nice thing now is my Southwest Aerial has a group of settings that are independent of the default 3D view. So I can go through and I can crop, I can do whatever I want, turn on that region. I can adjust the visibility graphics, I can change the scaling, whatever it is that I want to do. Okay, And this is going to be a fantastic view to put on a sheet. So I'll say new sheet. I'll put my southwest aerial on the sheet and everything's going to be, si everything's going to be fine. If I go back to the 3D view, it still looks the same, but I can orbit that around. The nice thing, though, is the Southwest Aerial locked into those original settings. OK, so whenever you want to lock a camera, duplicate a view. OK, so that's about my only big caveat in terms of working with a 3D view you have to watch out for. Just create a duplicate view so you can lock it, and then float around from there. OK, zoom to fit there. Now, 3D views are kind of cool with these orbiting views, but they still have like kind of one little limitation to them. And that is this whole notion that you tend to be looking at the world from the outside. And sometimes you want to be looking at what's inside the world. So let me show you. It's probably my favorite little trick for 3D views. And it's something called using the section box. OK, it works like this. Let me go ahead and I'm even going to go ahead and take that 3D view and duplicate it. And create another view. I'm going to call this, oh, my 3D section. Okay, so far it's just a view. There's nothing special about it. But if we go to its view properties, I'll say no thank you for now. One of the settings that's available is not just cropping it, but this thing called the section box. Let's turn that on. I'll zoom on out so you can see what it's doing. The section box is, if you can picture it, it's a big box. It's been drawn all the way around where each of the different planes out the surfaces of the box are sections. They're section planes that you can move. So for example, if I want to see into the building, I can take this front plane and push it in. Okay, And I'm actually just drawing a 3D section through the building right there. Okay. Similarly, I can push this one over on the side. Oops, grab it, push it in, kind of cut off. Oh, not quite enough. Go a little bit further. I'll push that in just a hair further. If I can grab it, come on. It 
it's hiding me. There we go. Cut off that whole corner. You could also go ahead and use the same sort of approach to just scalp the building. If, for example, if you've got a two-story building and you really want to look down into the first floor level, you can push the section box down, cut off the second floor level, and you have a nice little 3D view that you can orbit and do whatever you need to to kind of see inside the building. So this kind of view okay, could be sort of a very effective way of explaining things to people. You know, if they really want people to see sort of what your floor plan is like, some people relate to things better like just like a dollhouse view. Some people like to see it this way. You know, we can even get very, very detailed getting close and actually make 3D construction details using the same sort of technique. So section box just gives you another technique. I know a lot of folks originally, for the first assignment, we got into sort of just taking a roof and hiding the whole roof so you can see inside. But now that you start working with two-story buildings, this ability to go through and kind of just completely cut off sides or cut off entire floor levels you know, can be very, very useful. So go ahead and again, create as many different views as you want because your different views can have different rotations, different orientations, different section boxes. You know, make views to kind of illustrate whatever it is you need. Okay, good on that? Excellent. Okay, our friends, the 3D orbiting views, the 3D perspective, or the default views, are joined by perspective views, and let's talk about them. Okay, perspective views really probably create the most natural views, but they're a little bit harder to control. The key, though, is if you're used to playing around with a camera, okay, you gotta think of these in terms of the way you would actually manipulate and operate a camera, and then you'll go, you know, everything will be okay. If I'm looking at the floor plan view and I go to the view tab and say create a new 3D view, I have the choice of a camera view. And when I place the camera view, let's look at what we have available as options. We have the scale of the view. We can choose that, whether or not it's perspective. We almost always leave that turned on. Then we have this thing called the offset and the level. That is really the height of your eye, the height that the camera is going to be. So this is currently set to be five foot six off of level one, okay? And five foot six is chosen just because for a lot of people, that's about where my eyes are. Five foot six is pretty good. Now, we can set this differently. We can go ahead and when you want to create something really dramatic, you can bring it on down close to the floor and look up at things, or you can look down at things. In fact, you're gonna learn when we start making movies that you can sort of change the floor level as well as the offset and use these settings to actually walk up a stair, okay? But you always have where the camera is gonna be Okay, relative to what the floor level you want to choose. You choose the location for the camera, you pull on out towards what you want to look at. That little red dot you see, or the pink dot you see out there, that's the target. I can choose over here, or I can choose to look over here. And that little area that you're looking at, that's the view cone. That's the difference that given this cropping, how wide we're going to see. Okay. You can think of this, if you're familiar with cameras, about using different types of lenses, whether you're using a fisheye lens that has a very wide sort of focal angle, or whether you have a telephoto lens that has a very narrow focal angle. Okay? And you go ahead and click that there, place the camera. It creates a nice little 3D view. Again, we're, we can still go filter, crop, all those things are available. Let's show you the special little nuances to this one. Cropping for a 3D view or a perspective view really adjusts the width of the angle. So I can stretch an angle out like that, okay? But you don't want to get too awfully wide. If you start getting very, very wide, it's like using a very wide angle lens. And what happens with wide angle lenses around the edges is the objects way out on the end start getting very distorted. Okay, so they look, you know, they're, they're not the way they appear. Things look really sort of big and twisted and stuff like that. So if you really want to see more of the building, you sort of have a choice. You could go ahead and just try and stretch it, and things may get a little distorted at the edges. A better strategy sometime, though, if you don't want the distortion, maybe to come on out. Let me zoom out further and make another view, camera view. I'll be out here just even further, pull on out. Okay, and then I can zoom that in. What that's the effect of, it's like using a telephoto lens. It's actually truer. I can zoom a telephoto lens and it'll still be relatively flat and accurate. Okay, but 
you know, it's, you gotta sort of think about which effect you're trying to create, whether you want the drama of the twisting and distortion or not. So those two views in some ways are similar, but notice that in this view, the building is somehow flatter and the perspective is not as strong, whereas in this view, the perspective is a little bit stronger. You can sort of see the recession in the, to the, the vanishing points a little bit more strongly. Okay, so go ahead, place your cameras, that's okay. If you want to go through and adjust any of these cameras, you can by going back to the floor plan view. And if the camera is invisible, what you can do is actually just choose the view in the browser. You can right click on it and say show the camera. You can actually see how it's defined. So with it here, you can move the camera if you like. You can move the target if you like. Or you can even move this thing, and if you haven't guessed yet, that is the far clip. So let's show you what that's all about. Okay, this happens to people when you're drawing your, your views every once in a while. You draw your camera view, and you get something that looks like that. Okay, which is sort of okay, but you're really wondering where the rest of your drawing is. Okay, what's happening is, if I go back to that level, and I say let's view that camera again. Oops. View. Show the camera. This far clip is just set too close. If I push it back, this is going to see the walkway without actually sort of seeing the uh, stairway. Okay, but if I go back even further still, Let's say 3D section view there. Show the camera. Pull it out there. Okay, now we'll get the whole building in there. So this is all about just getting things into the right perspective. Okay, you know, getting, setting the camera, figuring out how far back you want to be looking in the view. Again, once you're here, the whole issue of the shading, what you're seeing, what you're not seeing, it's all the same. View, visibility, graphics. If I don't want to see the planting, I'll turn that off. If I do want to see it, I'll bring it back again. Okay, so that part of the lesson stays just the same. Okay. Yes? Um, after I've got my screen camera view up, yeah. uh, how can I go back into the, say, the floor plan and edit some of the, you know, the uh, far plan changes that I have before? Yeah. It's a little bit weird, right? Because you don't see the camera right off. What you got to do is find the view, which whatever view that you're talking about, okay, and we should rename these so we can sort of get a better idea, but then you right click on it and you can say show the camera. And then it'll bring it up. Okay, now this whole issue of cameras and positioning the cameras and perspective views, it turns out there's a steering wheel that actually helps you with that too. So let's just look at that real briefly. I'll go to my 3D view two or my 3D view one, the camera views. And let's take a look at what the steering wheel will do for you there. Because some people prefer to uh, change the camera views around this way. You can go ahead and orbit one of these views, okay, which is sort of like moving the camera around the surface of a globe. You can pan it. Okay. You can do this thing called looking. Looking has the effect of picture the you and your camera, your head staying in the same place, and you're just looking left or right or up and down. Okay, so I'm looking further down, I'm looking further up. I'm pretty high up on the building now. Let me move myself down. I'm sort of above the ground pretty far. Let me get myself down here. That's more sort of natural. Okay, now I can look up, I can look left, I can look right. Okay, so that's just really my head's in the same place. I'm just sort of pivoting it around on top of my neck. Another very popular effect is the walk technique, and the walk technique lets you sort of oops, move in closer to the building by dragging up or move back. Or move over here. We can sort of navigate around. Or, as some people like to do, go crashing into the building. and take a look around. Uh, I'm going a little bit too fast. Once I get the camera to a good position, 
it's probably better then to think about looking around and sort of figuring out where I am. Okay. Or don't feel like you have to keep on navigating around that way, because that is actually sort of a little, it's difficult to navigate around that way in some ways. You know, if it makes more sense to you, just come to the view, put a camera in there at the top of the stairs looking over, okay, and just get the view you want. <laughs> okay, it's really the same. Either way, just kind of two different ways to get to the same goal. Okay, but you will want to go ahead and rename your camera views in the project browser because they show up as 3D1, 3D view 1, 2. So I'm going to name that, oh, that's like my uh, second floor loft. Whereas this is, oh, this is the front view distant. Okay, so yes, great. A very good question. They're a little bit different. The, 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 the orbiting views and the 3D views, they sort of operate a little bit differently. So let's take a look at how they each work. Okay, this one over here was a, a default view. That one's actually controlled by its scale. So if I say activate it, it has an eighth scale. I can make it quarter scale. It'll resize that way, okay, because it actually has this notion of a true scale. It's accurate. If you took your uh, tape measure and laid it down, you would actually get the precise dimension. Okay. The other type, let me deactivate that view. The camera views are a little bit different. Let me bring one of them in. Oh, uh, let my second floor loft. Okay. It's there. Oh, it's so tiny. I can't stand it. It's really killing me down here. So what am I going to do? I can do this thing where I choose it and I say size crop. Let's show you what that's all about. There's a couple of ways to do this. This is one way. I can then, oh, let's see. I think this will work. I'm going to experiment with this just to make sure. I could be off. Yep, that actually did the right thing. Okay, it's basically scaling the model to whatever size I want. But let me actually do it a different way that I think is a little bit more straightforward for you. Okay, here's, oops, bring it back in there. This might ring a little truer for you. Let's go ahead and choose it. I'm going to activate it the same way I did the other ones. And won't let me do it now. And that's just going to scale it that way. No, it's just going to be size crop. Just change it a little bit. Okay, so size crop. And can sort of rescale it that way. What you got to do then, it's kind of the same issue as when you bring in like uh, the views and they're sort of in the wrong place. Let me deactivate the view. The title bar sometimes gets out of sync with where you want it to be. So what, what you can do is either ta you can select it and drag it down. Or the thing that I'm always doing that seems really counterintuitive to people is I'll just delete the view and when I bring it back in, it'll bring it back in and put the title bar where it belongs.